Hello there. So on this video, I am going to show you start to finish a little bit sped up. So you're not sitting here for, you know, five, 45 minutes, um, a, a shag mullet that I created for my client. Um, she loves to have the front of her hair really, really short. Um, her hair is very coarse and so it can really bother her face when it starts growing out. And so we always start off her haircut very short but this time she wanted a little bit of length in the back so we've done everything we've done bobs pixies all the things and this time we decided we wanted to create kind of a shaggy look in the back but keep it really really short in the front so that's why i titled it a shullet or a shag mullet and um, you could of course go more extreme with this cut and leave it even longer in the back um, her hair is already pretty short as you can see so we just were basically working with the length we had so i'm going to start out by parting it from her ear up to the crown and then down to the other side to her other ear and i'm going to use the razor for this cut i don't always use the razor on her hair sometimes i use scissors um, especially because i need to get the the front fringe really really short and so um, sometimes the scissors just easier to get in there and so you'll notice i'm going back and forth with the toe and the heel of my razor depending on which side i'm working on i am right-handed so if you're left-handed it would probably be the opposite but uh, I'm just gonna go back and forth and start getting the fringe to the length I want it. And you'll notice, as I said, back and forth a couple times, I do work back and forth. I don't do just her left side and then go back and do the right side. I will do a little bit on one side and then go back onto the other side and make sure that it's symmetrical. And that if there's something I did, like, I don't know, took took the sideburn shorter and textured it in a certain way, I wanna immediately go to the other sideburn, take that shorter and texture it in a similar way. You know, it might not be exactly the same because the hair is different on either side of the head, but I want to remember everything I've done. And I feel like sometimes when I work on one side of the head too long, by the time I get to the other side, I forget some of those little details that I carved in there. And so I really want to um, remember all the details that I've done on the cut. So anyway, for me, going back and forth works really well. Of course, do what works well for you. So I'm just little by little carving out this shape. And that really is how I cut hair. I, I always liken it to carving or sculpting, um, sketching. I'm never just going in and creating just this solid line. It's very soft, very lived in. And that just is my particular style. It works really well and it um, allows their hair to grow out really well too. So um, you'll notice I'm just kind of slowly sketching in the, the shape that I want, short, like carving in the shape I want. And, um, and then I use, I, I of course show her and see, okay, do you want it short in the sideburns? Do you want it long in the sideburns? So at some point you'll see me asking her, you know, what does she want done with the sideburns? And, um, then I customize it based on what they're asking for. does like a lot of texture even though we take it very short she does not want it short and blunt she wants it short and very textured so you'll see that <clears throat> I go in I take length and then I'll take my razor in at a different angle and just kind of give her just some pieciness in there um, and I also have to go back in once it's dry and usually do it as well because her hair is coarse um, it wants to lay just very flat and blunt and so I just take my time with it and I just um, at each stage of the haircut, just make sure that I'm adding in texture and, um, and then of course customize it at the end.
And once I kind of have the basic shape carved in while it's wet, because I do like to do a lot of dry cutting, I'm gonna move on and start giving her some of that texture through the crown, taking off a little bit of length, um, but more so just kind of getting in there and making sure it's nice and piecey for her. Um, and I'm just kind of working my way through the crown in a diagonal shape so that it's shorter in the front and gradually gets longer in the back. And so you'll notice on the sides now, I'm pulling those forward so that I'm also kind of cutting in a diagonal shape. So as I pull these sections forward towards the front of her face, it makes the front of that shorter and gives her length towards the back. So that's gonna give her like a, sh a push of shorter to longer so that we keep that, um, the, the longer pieces in the back and don't make everything too short. So um, I'm over directing forward in this case, which I totally could do on the top as well, um, but that diagonal shape was already there. So I just kind of was working with it. So after, her sh after showing her the progress so far, uh, she does want the fringe a little bit shorter. So you'll see them going in there. So remember when you're using a razor and you're cutting um, above your fingers like this, I am elevating her bangs. And so when I let that back down, you're gonna see some pieces coming out from underneath. And so that's why I'm now taking it with no elevation or as little elevation as possible and trying to cut off any fringy pieces that were left when I elevated those pieces into my fingers. So keep that in mind that whenever you elevate the hair, you're gonna create a graduated shape which is fine if that's what you're going for but when you do let that hair down and there's no more elevation you're gonna have some pieces coming from underneath so just make sure you pay attention to detail check you know if if those pieces that are there are where you want them and what you want and if not you know go back in and texture and cut some more so I just kind of show her each each step like is that good is that short enough? Is that textured enough? I really make sure that my clients are very involved in the process because you know, at the end of the day, no matter what I like, um, they're the ones who have to wear it. And so I want them to be completely happy and um, feel comfortable to tell me if it's too short or too long or what, you know, whatever. So, and even if let's say it was too short, <clears throat> I would make note of that so that next time I didn't take it too short again. So um, now I'm going back through. I am uh, blending those front hairs to the back there, or those front sections to the back, making sure that I have some blending and I'll start working through to the back. Um, and I'm also working a little bit more vertically so that I can create some texture in there. Um, you know, some long and short hairs over directing again towards the front to keep that length in the back. And right here, I'm just kind of getting rid of a little bit of length. And then you can see when I go in deeper into the sections, I'm also taking out bulk and making sure that it is uh, nice and textured and dimensional. Now in this part here, the way I'm kind of taking my thumb and taking off a little bit of length, some people don't really like that technique and that's totally fine. There's so many different ways to do this. I could easily hold the hair another way and be cutting behind my knuckle um, or behind my fingers. Um, it is a little bit harder to grip the hair. Um, I could have done this with scissors as well and I could have also gone in horizontally and just taken off a little bit of length. But I do like to use this sometimes uh, because I can see exactly how much hair I want to take off. In this case, I'm leaving it as long as possible and so I was only taking off like quarter of an inch and sometimes a quarter of an inch is kind of hard to grip in your fingers and go behind there um, and take off just such a small amount and so just holding it and kind of using my thumb to create some tension in the hair it works fine it's you know it's not the it's probably not the most recommended technique but you know do what works for you it's not harming her hair and it's not you know harming me because there's a guard on the razor so it works you know don't you know do what works and now I'm gonna go in section by section, just on a slight diagonal, and just carve it out some uh, deeper texture in there, um, just so that she has more of a fringy look, more of a shaggy type of look. Again, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, her hair likes to lay kind of blunt, so I just go to town with the texture, and her hair loves it, and she loves it too, so uh, it works really well. So I'm just kind of going back and forth, seeing what areas still look a little bit thick and bulky. I'm really wanting a fringy finish on this, and so just kind of checking it, um, giving her a fringy finish through the back um, hairline, and make some last finishing touches before I get ready to blow dry. So I'm just gonna go through it real quick, and then I'll get to the styling portion.
And just a quick side note about razors, make sure that you're changing your razor with every haircut. Um, and sometimes if the person has really coarse hair or really long or you're doing a lot of work in there, it may dull the razor within one haircut. You may have to go through two blades uh, within one haircut. So if it starts feeling like it's pulling, if they seem like it's starting to feel uncomfortable and definitely if you're doing a razor cut, make sure you're checking in with them, making sure that it's not pulling or hurting. Um, and if they start feeling like it's kind of giving them like a little wince or something like that, you know, like they seem like it's not super comfortable, just go ahead and change that razor and it will start cutting through the hair like butter again. So don't hesitate to do that and make sure you're changing that razor with every uh, client that you're doing um, a full razor cut with. So um, it will make all the difference in your razor cuts. So as you can probably see, she has quite a few calyx in her hair and typically when I'm doing her hair, I just go with them. If they want to show or go a certain way, I just try to cut to what her calyx wants to do. So I was just wrap drying through the top and the, the crown and the front of the hair and then activating some of her wave here in the back with a diffuser. I don't have too much product in it yet because I still need to go back through it with my scissors um, and then I'll kind of restyle and fix it up and put a little more texture product in there like a paste or something and um, she's done so please let me know if you have any questions um, drop them in the comment section below and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more content like this and also make sure you drop in the comments if there's any other content you'd like to see I'm all for suggestions and would love to record uh, what you're looking to see on my channel so thank you so much and enjoy the rest of this cut I love how it came out and she's just my favorite
Thank you.